Hello, welcome to module three, lecture 3C on the practical application of the consolidated framework for implementation research. I'm Dr. Kavita Singh, an epidemiologist and senior research scientist at Heidelberg University in Germany and Public Health Foundation of India and Center for Chronic Disease Control in New Delhi, India. This lecture is part of the GACD Implementation Science eHub Fundamentals Program. So today we will explore what CIFA is, why do we need it and how to operationalize it. Our focus will be on demonstrating a practical application of CIFA in real world projects with minimal theoretical discussion. So let's begin with what is the CIFA. The the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research provides a comprehensive menu of constructs that are organized across five domains, outer setting, inner setting, intervention characteristics, individuals involved, and the process of implementation or change. These five domains can be applied to various settings and it offers a systematic approach to develop the intervention, then assess potential barriers and facilitators to guide successful implementation and support evaluation of the evidence-based interventions. Additionally, CIFA aims in developing context-specific logic models or generalizable middle-range theories. Now that we know what CIFA is, Let's understand a bit more about why do we need the CIFA. The advantage of using CIFA is that it is quite comprehensive in scope as it consolidates a range of 19 existing frameworks or theories, and therefore it promotes consistent use of constructs, terminology, and definitions. Importantly, it allows for tailored application of intervention to specific settings. This framework is particularly useful to identify and organize barriers and facilitators early on, enabling appropriate adaptations to innovations, thereby ensuring the successful delivery and uptake of evidence-based interventions. Let's now consider an example of using CIFA to guide the development of an evidence-based interventions. Here I'm taking example of a trial that is currently ongoing and which is funded by the US National Institutes of Health and Fogarty International Center. The trial is currently ongoing across four hospitals in India, but we used CIFA to, to develop and guide the implementation of an intervention. To develop the evidence-based intervention, we used CIFA, which helped us describe the current practices, understand the context and challenges and opportunities from various stakeholder perspectives, including patients, caregivers, healthcare providers, and health administrators in India. So we conducted key informant interviews with a range of stakeholders, 38 physicians and cardiologists, 14 health workers, three health administrators or policy makers, and 16 patients and their caregivers. From these qualitative interviews, we gathered valuable insights around the perceived barriers and facilitators around the development and implementation of a cardiovascular disease quality improvement strategy which was targeted at multiple levels, patient, provider, and health system level. And these insights helped inform the development of the intervention. To give you more insights, here are some of the quotes that we learned from our key informants, where a physician noted that the importance of decision support system in prompting essential prescription drugs. In his own words, he said, the DSS prompt can be an alert for the physician if something is missed in the prescription. 
On the other hand, a health administrator emphasized the importance of lifestyle modification, where he said 90% of your problems and recurrence of cardiovascular disease events will be stopped if you are able to modify the lifestyle. A nurse highlighted the ubiquity of mobile technology and said, even a person in the village today has a mobile and capable of reading anything in it. However, there were also criticisms around the proposed quality improvement strategy, where a physician critiqued the EHR DSS design and said their advisors are not real-time doctors. They have not sat through in the clinic, which has implications for the feasibility and acceptability of such an intervention in routine care. So these insights from key informant interviews further helped operationalize CIFO to guide the implementation process. As you can see in the slide, we organized the major themes, the barriers and facilitators of implementing such a strategy across five domains, intervention characteristics, outer setting, characteristics of key actors or individuals involved in implementing the strategy, inner setting factors and the processes. Important to note that there was quite a bit of variability in the perceived needs and threats to the implementation of CQIP strategy across public and private hospitals in India. By thinking through each of the CIFA domains, we were able to visualize clearly where could be perceived bottlenecks in implementation and accordingly we devised implementation strategies to improve the uptake of evidence-based interventions here for secondary prevention of cardiovascular diseases in India. Next, the main findings of the key informant interviews were summarized using CIFO, where we used CIFO as a determinant framework. And then we applied this information to create an implementation research logic model which we are currently testing for the implementation and effectiveness outcomes in the ongoing randomized trial in India. Here in the first panel shows the CIFR domains which are color coded and you can see the positive themes are highlighted in green color, the neutral ones in purple and the barriers are highlighted in red font. To overcome these barriers that we learned by using CIFR, we created or designed implementation strategies that are listed here as electronic health records and decision support system to improve physicians or to enhance physicians' responsiveness to timely treatment modification. The second strategy included a trained and supervised non-physician healthcare worker to facilitate care for these patients. Third, we proposed a strategy that included text message-based reminders for healthy lifestyle modification and um, for the next clinic and lab visit appointments. Important to note that we added additional implementation strategies to this multi-level intervention like patient diary and VITA tool to improve adherence to medications and a quarterly audit and feedback reports for the clinical care team. We then hypothesized potential mechanisms through which these implementation strategies could bring about changes in implementation outcomes and health service delivery and patient level clinical outcomes. The third example I wanted to present today will demonstrate how to use C4 to evaluate the sustainability of an evidence-based intervention. So far, we learned how CIFR could be applied to inform the development and implementation of an evidence-based intervention. And you probably would have noted that the CIFR is quite wieldy by having many domains, constructs, and subconstructs. However, in practice, you can actually choose a single domain and only few constructs to deepen your understanding around the factors that may influence the intervention acceptability and sustainability. 
For example, in this study, we solely focused on inner setting domain of CIFA and it was operationalized to a randomized clinical trial data that gathered stakeholder interviews. Longitudinal interviews with a range of stakeholders were conducted in the study at three time points, pre-implementation, late implementation, and post-implementation phase. And these interview data were used to understand stakeholder perspectives regarding acceptability and sustainability of a diabetes care model in South Asia. I'm not going into the details of the clinical trial design or the intervention components. However, the idea here is to introduce the use of CFIRM to evaluate sustainability of an evidence-based intervention. This figure here shows the co-occurrence of sustainability-linked inner setting constructs and tension for change at baseline. Data from 10 clinic clinics were organized across the three subconstructs of inner setting that are available resources, compatibility, and relative priority. The results of the CIFO-based evaluation highlighted that the efforts to scale up and scale out this intervention should focus on ensuring that the care components are compatible with the clinic's priority needs and also need, there's a need to identify how the care coordinator's role will be integrated into existing clinical workflows. Okay, so to summarize, CIFA provides a pragmatic structure for approaching complex, multi-level and transient constructs in the real world. It consolidates and unifies key constructs from various implementation theories guiding formative evaluations and building the implementation knowledge base across multiple studies and settings. Lastly, I wanted you all to be aware that we used CIFA version 1 in these evaluations that I presented today. However, recently introduced the updated CIFA 2.0 addresses previous critiques around this framework by focusing more on innovation recipients and equity in implementation. This updated CIFA 2.0 further enhances the framework's applicability and relevance, particularly in diverse and low resource settings. For further reading, please refer to the following key papers. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by email.